It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, with the best hair in the financial services industry, and my father. Good morning, Bob Payne. How you doing, Dad? What's shaking on this glorious summer weekend? Well, you got it right, Rye. It's a glorious summer weekend. We're in the middle of summer. What could be better? How are things with you? I can't complain, Bob. I can't complain. I love summer in New York. I love when the weather's good, and I don't like winter, so it's, uh, you know, all is well. You've always been a man who loves the heat. That's true. That's true. I am a man who loves the heat. And Bob, as usual, I have some trivia for you to start the oh, show. All right. So as of last week, the richest man on the planet became $50 billion richer than anyone else on the planet. Do you know who that person is? Well, I knew at one point it was Bill Gates because of his Microsoft holdings. And then Warren Buffett, of course, is always up in the front runner. Mark Haywood told me today that he thinks it's a Russian oligarch, but um, I'll tell you who it is. <laughs> it's Mr. Bezos, Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Yes. The stock just hit a new high last week, which put him $50 billion ahead of Bill Gates at $143 billion in net worth. Not bad. Scariest man on the planet, Rye. You know what he says, your margins are my opportunity. You know, <laughs> caveat emptor, buyer beware. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would not want to go against Amazon. Just unbelievable to think they were selling books just 20 years ago. So who figures Man's online? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about financial health. Are you in top shape financially speaking? Bob and I are going to discuss key metrics to determine your financial well-being. We're going to talk about the fiduciary standard. What the heck is a fiduciary? And why is it so important to have one when it comes to your finances? Bob and I are going to break that down for you. Along with this week's financial pornography, there's a lot of stuff out there in the financial news, media. You need to avoid at all costs. Bob and I are going to point out the biggest culprits of financial pornography. Along with this week's spotlight segment, we have a special guest on the show this morning. We have Michelle McKinnon, certified financial planner, our colleague. She's going to talk about a real retirement plan she worked on. Just some of the tweaks, changes she had this couple make with their retirement plan to get them on track, to help you get on track. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about financial health. So Bob, in your estimation, what are good signs that someone who's retired or going to be retired has what we would call very good financial health? Well, the whole idea, Rise, right, you have to have direction, right? For, in order for somebody to give you a direction, you need to know where you are. So when we ask you these basic questions... You know, number one, do you have a portfolio strategy that's based on achieving your retirement goals? What answer do you normally get? I would say for the most part, you probably don't know, right? I mean, it's it's some vague time in the future. I think I have enough money. I think my advisor has everything taken care of. It's a very common answer that I hear. Another simple question is, if you were to retire today or if you're currently retired, how much do you need a year to live on? What do you usually hear? That's... The one I think that most of you probably can agree with, you probably don't know, right? I mean, when was the last time you actually sat down, really looked at what your budget is, and really figured out, what do I need to live on? I'd say most people, they don't have that number readily available. And then the third basic question is, you know, in terms of last year, on top of your contributions to your retirement plan, how much did you save? What do you usually answer to that, Ry? Yeah, I'd say the same thing. I'm not really sure. I think I have some money left over in my savings account, but I don't really know. So what, what it really comes down to is that we're all in the same boat. You know, you think the same way as everybody else. These are questions that need to be asked. You're so busy living your life, you don't think to answer them. And that's the number one reason why you need to have, you know, a good financial plan with a fiduciary is going to ask these questions. And that's how you know if you're on track to achieve those goals, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the baseline for that is is just having simply a retirement income plan, right? Knowing, number one, what do my expenses look like? If I'm in retirement now, what do I need above and beyond? If I'm getting Social Security, 
Do I have a pension coming in? You know, what's my income gap? Or if you're getting close to retirement, what are those expenses going to look like when I stop working? And then figuring out, do I have a portfolio that generates enough current income to cover those expenses? Yeah, you call that getting from point A to point B. Don't you want to know if you can get there? I know what B is. I know how much I have in A. Does it actually work? Does it actually get me there? That's a great question to ask and a good thing to know. But you know what really is the most important thing, Ryan? I'm dying to know, Bob. Tell me. If you're married, you know that you're the one who's managing the finances and your spouse is either uninterested or uninvolved or uncaring. And you have to be certain that they're well taken care of if you're no longer on God's green earth. Yeah, that's a good point because a lot of times you may handle the finances. You might say, I've got this covered. I'm in good shape. But the problem is the day that you walk out on life and someone else has to take over what you've been managing for all this time can be a real nightmare. And I think that's something you really need to assess is, is everything in financial order, if I'm not on God's green earth, is a really important question to ask yourself. Yeah, that's really the key. Is everything titled properly? Are the beneficiary forms correct? Are the pension benefits and social security benefits, is there a spousal benefit that you have to be aware of? Is there someone who's going to be able to replace you and sit down and explain that to the uninformed spouse? That's the question that needs to be answered. And that's how you know if you're in good financial shape. You may think you're doing well, and that's great. But what would happen if you weren't here? Yeah, that's a hard one to think about, but it's a very important one because we see it all the time. You know, So many times we have to sit down with the grieving spouse who didn't handle the money during the other spouse's lifetime. And all of a sudden, not only are you grieving, not only do you have a thousand things going on, but now you have to worry about getting all the finances in order. And that can be a very, very arduous process, but it doesn't have to be. So if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need a real financial plan. I need to be in good financial health. This is your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that addresses all these questions. All you need to do is bring in your financial statements, put them in a folder when they come in this month, bring them in the office. We're going to sort through everything for you. We're actually going to build you your own personalized portal where we can review all your finances at a bird's eye view. And we're going to determine all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Do you have an income gap? What income do you need? How do you optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap? We're going to look at diversification. What risks, unnecessary risks, do you have in your portfolio? If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio to manage the risk. And we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in portfolios. There's a lot of hidden costs in mutual funds, annuities, insurance products. Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into our famous total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, we have worked on for literally 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you need to do is call us or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We only have 10 spots. And if you're one of those 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, and there's no strings attached, but of course, there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Rye. We're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning, this is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist at Payne Capital Management. And this week marked the beginning of second quarter earnings season and with just over 10% of the companies in the S&P reporting, the results are well ahead of expectations. Since 2015, the equity markets have transitioned from what we call an interest rate driven bull market 
to an earnings-driven secular bull market. As of now, it seems as if second quarter results will translate into the 26th consecutive quarter in which actual earnings per share exceeded end of quarter analyst estimates. You'd even know investors are largely discounting the effects of what may become a global trade war. This possibility will likely continue to lead to elevated volatility. As famous investor Benjamin Graham often noted, in the short run, the market is a voting machine. But in the long run, it's a weighing machine. In the short run, investors tend to vote with their emotions, whether that be fear or greed. In the long run, however, the stock market's all about earnings, and the earnings outlook is outstanding. Indeed, the expectation is for 20% earnings growth over the next four quarters. A number of analysts are looking not only for record earnings in 2018, but some are estimating $200 a share in S&P earnings in the year 2020. That translates into much higher prices in the stock market. Now, it's no wonder that the market has made progress in the face of the uncertainty created by the potential trade war. See, that's what successful investing is all about. It's about putting your hard-earned money to work in the face of uncertainty. And of course, there's always uncertainty. You know, today it's tariffs. Tomorrow it may be interest rates or it may be recession or it may be inflation. As one strategist says, when it comes to investing, those who wait for clarity have already missed the boat. And when the major market indices hit new highs, no doubt, these will be the same folks who will be complaining that the market's too high or that it's overvalued, and they'll never get invested, and they'll never receive the returns that the market so generously gives. Well, meanwhile, the big winner on the week were energy pipeline MLPs, which rallied after the FERC, that's the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, finalized a new tax policy, which when announced this past March, weighed heavily on the MLP sector. The finalized version mitigates much of the negative impact, and as a result, MLPs were up huge on the week, demonstrating once again, in a well-diversified portfolio, there's opportunity on a daily basis. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, Where's the opportunity in the market today? Well, why sit there and wonder when you can know? Give us a call at 844-752-6692. You can call or text 844-752-6692. Hi, I'm a soon-to-be-retired mom. I'm also a grandmother, and as much as I enjoy visiting with my grandchildren, I'd like to be able to head home at the end of the weekend. I also want to make sure that they get a top-notch education one day. And of course, I want to look out for myself as well. With the proper financial plan in place, I can accomplish all of those goals. What about you? What are you doing to prepare for retirement? Make sure your family is cared for in retirement. And please, don't turn your weekend family visits into a permanent vacation. Schedule a visit with the team at Payne Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Take control of your financial future. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Planning for retirement shouldn't feel like rocket science, but it's easy to get lost in the financial jargon. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Let's clear up the confusion. Back to Ryan and Bob. This is no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we're all about financial education, giving you simple common sense advice to make sure that you're on your path to financial freedom. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's a simple baseline just to get you started in the retirement planning process. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, bullish, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888 what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. This is a great way to get started. Make sure that you're on track for retirement. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888 to download our video series for free. So Bob, one of the hottest topics in the world of financial planning is the issue of should you be working with a financial advisor who is a fiduciary? And you may or may not 
I've heard a lot about this, but right now it's a big debate going on in the financial services industry. So, Bob, you know, just going to the basics, what does it actually mean to be a fiduciary and why is it important? Well, it's really important, Rod, because simply stated, a fiduciary has to act in your best interest. So let me ask you a question. When it comes to your money, when it comes to everything in your life, would you rather work with someone who has your best interest in mind or has their best interest in mind? Is this a trick question, Bob? <laughs> it's so simple. It's so simple. I think, yeah, I think I want someone who's going to work in my best interest. Of course you do. So the most important question you can ask your advisor right now, I mean, pick up the phone, call your advisor right now and ask him this question. How are you compensated? What does that tell you, Rye? I think right away you'll find out if they're actually a fiduciary or not. Because number one, if they're getting compensated by the products that they sell you through a commission, that's not a good sign. And that probably means, actually, it means they're definitely not a fiduciary. Absolutely. And, and so there's really two ways of compensation. You either get paid per transaction or a commission. You get, you get paid to sell something or you get an advisory fee you know, for your total you know, investment advice and for the total advice package that you deliver. Now, is there a conflict of interest with commissions? <laughs> well, let me think about this, Bob. So if I'm going to sell you something and I get paid a really handsome commission right up front, the question becomes, am I selling you this product because I think it's a really good idea for you or I really need that commission this month because I need to make my mortgage payment? Yeah, there's a, there's a great temptation on the part of human nature to do what's in your best interest. And when it comes to commissions, it does create a gigantic conflict of interest. I mean, you go back to any bear market, you know, the 73, 74 bear market or the bear market in 2000 or 2008. You know, you have an advisor, you have a salesman who only gets paid on, on commission and they need to get you to do something, which may not be in your best interest. But if they don't, they don't get paid and they don't have a job. Doesn't it make more sense to have an advisor and they tell you to do nothing when nothing's the right thing to do? Yeah, and a lot of times that's the case. Sometimes nothing is the best strategy. I'd say more than not, sometimes doing nothing is the best strategy. And I had a case this past week. I was working with a guy who came in, and he was pretty blunt. He just said, how is my advisor or broker screwing me right now? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really blunt way to put it. That was it. He said, here, here's my portfolio. I don't know because that's the thing is the thing about our industry is a lot of times the fees or the commissions are hidden. And in this case, the guy's fees were hidden. And he didn't even know how he's being, quote unquote, screwed. Well, the nice thing I like about you know fee versus commission, number one, the interest of the advisor is side by side with the client, right? The more the portfolio grows, the bigger the compensation for the advisor. But you know the other risk I see, Rye, is when you have a commission based advisor, an advisor who lives on commissions, what types of portfolios do you see coming from that type of advisor versus a fee-based or a fiduciary? Yeah, it becomes the, the proverbial collection of investments, right? Because every time you have some money maybe available to put back into some sort of investment, your broker's calling you saying, hey, let's buy this or let's buy this. And meanwhile, all of a sudden now you just have this menagerie of all these different investments has nothing to do with your retirement goals, which is the point of getting invested anyway. Well, I mean, you know, if you have an art collection, it should be eclectic, right? You have coin collection, but your portfolio should be cohesive. It shouldn't be just a collection of ideas that somebody generates on a daily basis when they need to pay their mortgage. Don't you agree? Yeah. And odds are, that's what you probably have right now. If you were to look at your portfolio and have it analyzed, because there's a good chance not only do you have investments with one advisor, you might have three or four advisors and they're all they're all recommending different things for your portfolio. It ends up just being a mismatch of a lot of things. And again, a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that whoever's giving you the advice may not exactly have your interests at heart. And you know, and you know what, Ryan, and they're very good at dodging the answer, you know, that question about how you're compensated, how do you get paid Right, I find the best way to determine whether your advisor is a fiduciary and to really determine how they're getting compensated is to just to ask them, hey, you know, I showed you mine. Let me see yeah. yours. Let me see your <laughs> statement. What do you usually find, right, when you have somebody who's commission generated in terms of their strategy versus a fiduciary? Yeah. Does their portfolio look anything like the portfolio they built for you? No way. No way, right? <laughs> if, you're, if you're selling high commission products, there's no way that that person selling you that has the same portfolio. And that is, right? It's, it should be, if this portfolio is good enough for my family, it should be good enough for your family. 
And that's called having your interest in line. And that's why working with fiduciary is so critical. In fact, Bob, the easy way to find that out is ask your broker advisor two questions. Number one, how to get paid. Just point blank, ask them exactly how they get paid. And number two, ask them a simple question. Are you a fiduciary or are you not a fiduciary? And I'll tell you right now, in this day and age, if they say no to the second question, they're not a fiduciary, You know, it's probably best to look elsewhere to get the right advice when you're leading up to retirement and in retirement. Now, if you want to know if you have someone who's working in your best interest or you'd like to have your interest come first, what we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will analyze your situation and create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to have our CPA partner review your tax return, make sure you're utilizing every tax benefit available to you under the current tax law. We're going to look at your legal documents, your wills and your trusts. 42% of you don't even have a will. Uh, We're going to get you on that path to creating an estate plan that won't be an IOU to the IRS. Lastly, we'd like you to bring in all your investment statements. Now, we just finished the second quarter. You're getting all those reports. They're piled on your desk. Stick them in a shopping bag. Pick up the phone or text us. Set up an appointment. We're going to break down your portfolio and analyze to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, fees, and income. You know, risk are something that are only realized in hindsight. There could be a lot of hidden risk in your portfolio. Remember, it's the snake you don't see that bites you. Let's be certain that they're not laying in wait for you in that portfolio. Costs are critical. You don't want to be overcharged by anyone, specifically by your portfolio. And lastly, let's make sure you can fill that income gap while you're retired or while you're preparing for retirement. We want to be certain that you have a repeatable, consistent cash flow coming from that portfolio. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one cohesive plan for you, one total financial master plan that will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? That's right. We've been helping families like yours for four decades get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 safe for retirement. Call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain, financial radio. Hi, I'm a cleverly devised personification of Wall Street. I'm one wild roller coaster ride away from wreaking havoc on your investments, and I love to mess with your emotions. If you're not properly diversified, you can bet I'll keep you up all night thinking about me. There's really only one way to keep me off your mind, and that's by coming in for a visit with the team at Payne Capital Management. They'll ease your fears about market volatility with their signature Total Financial Master Plan. They'll even help you get financially organized with their 360 financial portal. It's a great way to get all your statements in one place. Otherwise, when I take a plunge, I'll send you scrambling through your file cabinet hoping you're well prepared. Don't wait for turmoil to hit. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Schedule your visit with Payne Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised 
financial decisions. So Bob, what egregious articles, advice did you find out there in the hard world of financial pornography? Right, we came across a very, very depressing recent forecast for the stock and bond market over the next seven years by renowned investment strategist Jeremy Grantham of the firm GMO. Well, I'm already skeptical when I hear renowned. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like it's already a gratuitous title for, uh, for this guy. Well, he's got a great reputation for being an academic. He makes a great case for his outlook. But, you know, I went back and I checked seven years ago and he had a very similar forecast for the financial markets. He predicted that the stock market over that seven year period would only return about 2.7% and about the same return for bonds. Now, do you think he was spot on with that prediction? <laughs> I'm going to guess he was wrong. <laughs> Actually, he just missed the return by about 10% a year. So stocks over that seven-year period that he predicted 2.7 returned over 13, and U.S. small cap stocks returned 12. That's a big whoops, wouldn't you say? Well, I guess uh, being an academic doesn't always correlate into making good financial predictions about the market, as we see very, very often here on financial pornography. Well, here's what I want to tell you about financial pornography, right? Number one, predicting the future is hard, right? I don't care if it's sports or politics, but when it comes to the financial markets, almost impossible. Yeah. And that's why we talk about having what we call an all weather portfolio, right? You have to have all your bases covered. You know, there's so many times that I hear, well, you know, what do we think is going to happen with the market? What do we think that interest rates are going to go up here? Do we think we should get some money in cash? And all that stuff sounds great, and it sounds so great to be strategic, but the reality of it is it has no value because if we are completely honest with ourselves, no one... Here's an academic, Bob. You give us a great example of somebody who's trying to predict the future, probably has more data than you and I. He's probably forgotten more data than you and I have in our, at our fingertips and still can't seem to predict what's going to happen next because it is impossible. You know, you just hit the nail right on the head, right? You know, when you have these sophisticated models, they're based on certain assumptions and averages, but your forecasts are betting on the market being normal, right? You're expecting investors to suddenly be rational so that you can just apply these math-based decisions. Well, guess what? Investors are rarely, if ever, rational, and the stock market is never normal. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I love and you know, I can't wait for things to get back to normal times. And I always think to myself, when were things normal? <laughs> I don't think they were ever normal. You know what um, I find but, with these guys <laughs> is that they just become these pessimistic contrarians because it makes them sound so much more intelligent, right? And they would rather just be pessimistic than they actually make money. And you know what these other people find out, right? Scaring people, you know, with fear forces them to subscribe to their newsletters. And that's how they make money, is selling fear. Yeah, exactly right, which could make you the most interesting person at the cocktail party, but doesn't get <laughs> great for uh, for investment decisions. And I think like that's something you need to think about with your portfolio are two very, very critical components. Is number one, do I have a portfolio that can account for any situation, right? I'm not making yep. any big bets on anything happening. I'm kind of prepared for anything. And number two... Again, it just comes back to income, right? Does my portfolio have an income stream that I cannot live? And that has nothing to do with if the market going to go up or down this week or next week. So I think, yeah. you know, when you're building your portfolio and you're thinking about building it for the long term, there's other things you need to focus on. And kind of in that same vein, Bob, I found an article this week that was actually, I would say, kind of spot on, saying that inflation is starting to look real, talking mm -hmm. about different things can happen in your portfolio. And it basically talks about the Fed was trying to get inflation to go up for the last couple of years, which is true. Now, if you look at the last couple of years, we've had very low inflation, but the Fed's been trying to get inflation going. And the article goes on to say as well, whatever your solution is can now be the next problem. And we're starting to see that, right? We're starting to see inflation go up, which means you need to account for that in your portfolio. Yeah, you definitely want to have a portfolio that's built differently for the next 10 years than the one you've had the last 10 years. You know, I want to go in hand in hand with that inflation rise. You said the Fed has been increasing short term interest rates. And a lot of people are pointing to, you know, the yield curve they invert. You know what happens when the yield curve inverts? Recession. Right. The last seven recessions were preceded by an inversion of the yield curve. But what really cracks me up is that you're sitting there reading article after article about people timing the timing mechanism, right? So they're, they're telling you when the yield curve is going to invert. 
So they're telling you how to time an indicator. It's really just a waste of time and effort because none of this stuff is predictable. Yeah, exactly right. But again, you want to be prepared. So, you know, inflation, let's just say inflation does start going up, which we're starting to see. Is your portfolio prepared for that? Do you have the right investments in your portfolio? You know, one thing we talk about a lot on the show is owning bond funds. You may own Mm. bond funds in your portfolio for safety, but the reality of it is as interest rates start to go up, which they have, those bond funds, which you think are safe investments, become a very risky place to be. You know, the average advisor has only been in the industry and working as an advisor under 30 years. They've never you been in the industry? seen a bear market in bonds, right? Never. And Bob, how long have you been in the industry? Just out of curiosity. Well, you know, I'm more older than dirt. And, <laughs> um, you know, I, I did meet President Lincoln when he created the Internet. But that's beside <laughs> the point. But you know, I, I, met with, uh, I met with someone this week who had a million dollars invested in leveraged closed-end bond funds. They're down 176000 in an investment that they were told is very secure. Now, not only are they in long-term bonds that suffer when rates go up, but they're using leverage. In other words, they're borrowing 50 cents on a dollar to buy more bonds. And guess when they come due? Never. Never. This person is, is five years from retirement. They didn't have a gray hair on their head, but when we finished the meeting, they were grayer than I was. <laughs> That's pretty great, Bob. <laughs> well, you, know, you want to be sure that you want to be certain when you look at your portfolio, when you, if you have a bond fund, it's time to take a hard look. Bond yeah. funds are bad, right? That's uh, that's you heard it first from Bob Payne. Bond, bond fan, funds bond are funds bad. Are evil. They're bad. They're dangerous to your financial health. There's better way to do it. There's a cheaper way to do it. There's a less risky way to do it. If you're thinking to yourself, I need to get a portfolio review. I make sure my portfolio is prepared for the next ten years. I have account for inflation. I have income. I cannot live. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next ten callers, you have over two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement. Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. That's a full holistic review that addresses everything. Simply bring in statements from last month, put them in a folder. We'll make it easy on you. We'll sort through everything when you get to the office, and we're going to build you your own personalized portal so we can view your entire financial picture from a bird's eye view, and we can look at all the critical components. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. What's your income gap? How are you going to replace your income when you're not working? Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in portfolios. Are you working with a broker who's selling you high commission products? Bob and I are going to show you where you can reduce cost on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio bulletproofed? If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to protect your portfolio to make sure it's retirement ready. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. We have a few slots left. Give us a call or just text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. My son and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. I'm Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we're simple men, so we like to keep it simple for you, and that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a simple baseline to get you started with the retirement planning process, and you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. Check it out. It's a nice, simple way just to get started. If you're getting close to retirement or in retirement now, you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about me and Bob, you can always check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bullish 
Bebolish.com. That's Bebolish.com. You can subscribe to the show. You can check out Bob's hair. It is real. It's amazing. You want to check it out. And you can check me out most weeks on CNBC and Fox Business News, giving you the latest market commentary. So you can check that out as well. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, Bob and I will answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some great questions. And to help us out, we have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. What's shaking, Mark? How you doing? Doing all right this morning, gents. It's the big day, so I'm going to uh, finish up the show and then head on down to uh, get married. <laughs> Casual That's weekend. A, I like that, man. You know, get the work in first, then get married. That's you know, right. Put it into your normal weekend. That's a man. Well, I'm just laying the groundwork. I have to provide for my family, you know, so... Mark, yeah. is it true that uh, everybody in your office is saying dead man walking? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have their full support. I'm ready to their take the plunge. <laughs> oh, man. But before I do, we do have to get to a few questions. We've got some good ones this week. This one comes into us from Hank and King of Prussia. Hank says, Bob, I've heard that you need to have between 15 and 20 times your annual salary and savings to be able to retire comfortably. Do you think that's accurate? Well, that's a great question, Hank, and um, I can tell you one thing. My son, Ryan, does not like rules of thumb, so it, everybody's different, right? We all have different life expectancy. We have different lifestyles. You know, how much you need to retire with and how much you need to live on retirement is really a personal decision, but the proper way to save is to identify your goals first. So, Rod, when we look at the great goals of life, what are some of the goals that you need to save for on a systematic basis? Well, the first one is obvious, creating an income that you cannot live. And again, to your point, Bob, your income needs are going to be very different from somebody else. So that's the first and foremost that I think about when it comes to a good retirement plan. Yeah. So let's take that issue, right? You know, saving for retirement. What's the first place you should look to to, to invest dollar one, saving dollar one? Where should that go? Yeah. Always a retirement plan with your business because that's really one of the only tax advantages we have left, especially if you're working for a company. And when's the best time to start saving for retirement? Yesterday, Bob. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, when you have children, you might think, okay, I've been, you know, I'm a professional, I've been running my business, or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a professional and I save systematically and max out my retirement savings. But if you have children just graduated college, you have people in their early years, in their 20s, that are working, make certain that they're maximizing out that savings because that money will compound and create enormous wealth for them in their lifetime. Now, retirement's critical, right? But what's the second great goal of life in terms of goals and what you need to save for? Educating your children. Yeah. And what's the best way to, to save for education today? I mean, you have lots of different things like a 529 plan where the money is tax free for some of high school education and college education or higher education. Yeah. I mean, a 529 plan is the greatest thing in terms of college, saving for college expenses since sliced bread. I mean, I didn't have 529 plans when you were born. You know, we had UGMA accounts, uniform gift to minors accounts or uh, uniform trust accounts. And, you know, you were limited in terms of what you could do. These things grow tax free. And, you know, it's a good thing we have that, right? What's happening to the cost of education today? Well, it's gone up astronomically. So, I mean, it's become one of the, the greater burdens that most families have. And that's the other thing, too, if, if maybe not your children, but your grandkids are going to need some sort of help when it comes to college, it's a great place to start to fund some money. I mean, let's just take your alma mater, you know, Villanova. You know, what will Villanova be for someone who's born today when they're 18? What, what would you guess the I'm estimated I'm scared. I think it's be? over 70 a year now. So I have no idea what it's going to look like in, in 10 years, 15 years. But I'm sure it's uh, it's going to be probably like 100000 a year or something crazy. Yeah. So you, get, you have $400,000 for four years after tax. That's real money. And that's, and that's really what planning is about. And that's what everything should be in terms of how you save. Look at a specific goal. You know, when you were born, Rye, I knew that when you were 18, you were going to go to college somewhere. I didn't know where. I knew it was going to cost a certain amount of money. And I knew it was an obligation that I would have to meet when you were 18. So, you know, having that specific target, knowing that 18 years from now that I had to write a check, you know, to some institution makes it easy to save. It makes it, you know, it's, it's so simple to put a plan together when you identify these specific targets or goals. And I think that's really, Hank, what you got to think about. You know, in terms of how much do I save and you save enough, you save what you need to do 
you know, to achieve your goals. All right. Thanks for writing in, Hank. Let's move over now to Marie in White Plains, New York. Marie says, Ryan, I wasn't planning to move, but my dream home just came on the market. What do you think, Ryan? One of those uh, New England style cottages, perhaps up there? (laughs) She says, my current home is paid off, but I'd have to take out a mortgage if I bought this one. I'm retiring in five years, so is it a bad idea for me to have a mortgage? Yeah, we always talk about there's good and bad debt. I mean, not necessarily a bad thing to have a mortgage, especially since interest rates are still relatively low. But I would take it a step further. When I look at if you have a mortgage or you're about to pay a mortgage off, you're near retirement or in retirement, it really comes down to peace of mind. Because you may have a great rate on your mortgage and it might make a lot of sense from a portfolio perspective to keep that mortgage outstanding, but you might not be able to sleep at night. And Bob, you always talk about building your portfolio to the sleep point. So I think that has to come into play here. Yeah, debt is a very personal thing. And some people just can't sleep at night knowing they have this obligation, even though it's secured by it, you know, your home by a great piece of property. But you know, who wants to lose their home? Right? You always think the worst. The older you get, the more insecure you become about your future. So, and that's the best point, right? Mortgage rates, no matter what mortgage rate you have right now, it's lower than what it is right now. All right. So, you know, anything you've locked in before, you don't want to give that up. Yeah. So I think it's just going to come down to Marie. It's a portfolio decision, and it's something that has to be accounted for along with all the other moving parts of your retirement plan because, hey, maybe you have enough cash sitting in your checking account to just pay for the house outright. And if it doesn't affect your retirement situation, that might be the best way to go. Right. You know how I feel about homes, right? It's um, as you get older, your home gets older. Now, what really worries me about Marie is that her dream home just came on the market means it's not a new construction, means it's been there for a while. All I can think about is what needs to be replaced. (laughs) Very pragmatic. Very pragmatic, right? So, Rob, I have a question for you. Ask Bob. On a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would you say Hank and Marie are? Sounds like they need to get the baseline started. They got a long way to go. I'm going to give them about a three on a scale of one to 10. Now, if I were to ask you on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would you like to be? Boy, wouldn't everybody want to be a 10? Well, if you'd like to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers. Because if you've saved over 200000 for retirement, my son and I will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. This is a real-time site which will allow you to see how much you're worth, what your portfolio is doing, and it'll articulate every goal. But more importantly, it'll track your progress towards achieving those goals. See, if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to analyze your tax return to make sure you're utilizing every tax benefit currently available under the new tax law. We're going to look at your legal docs. We're going to look at your wills and your trust. Most of you don't even have a will. We're going to have you start to get on that path to creating an estate plan that's certainly not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, we're going to ask you to bring in all of your investment statements. Now, they're sitting on your desk. You don't have to open them. You don't have to analyze them. You don't have to understand. Just stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone or text, and set an appointment. We're going to break down your portfolio and analyze to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be diversified across asset classes and within asset classes to reduce the overall risk. No one likes to be overcharged. I know I don't. You certainly don't want to be overcharged on your portfolio. And lastly, let's be certain that you have the income to fill that gap while you're retired or if you're planning to retire. And finally, we'll tie it all together into one total financial master plan that will answer the age-old question. Are you going to outlive that money or is that money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for 43 years. That's right. For over four decades, We've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B to your goals, to your dreams, with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track. Call or text 844 844- 752-6692. We have a couple slots left. If you call now and have over $200,000 safe for retirement, call or text us at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. 
Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844 844- 752-6692. That's text the word cash, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And our goal here at Pain Capital Management is to give you simple, common sense advice. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income you cannot outlive. It's a very easy, simple baseline to get you started with the financial planning process, and you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And it's time for my favorite segment, when we actually take a real retirement plan, we dissect it, and we look at the different mistakes pain points, flaws in the retirement planning process and how we fixed it. And to do that today, we have our star certified financial planner, Miss Michelle McKinnon. Nice to see you, Michelle. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm uh, flattered that you're excited to be here. (laughs) Always, Ryan. (laughs) Thanks for being on the show this morning. And I know you worked on a case this past week and this couple had some issues with their retirement planning. Why don't you break it down for us and talk about how you worked your magic. Yeah, absolutely. So wonderful couple. We've got one that is retiring. She's 67. And then we have another another woman who is retiring about six years after that. So a little bit of the age difference. So that's point one. Point two, they've been working with this insurance company that provides mutual funds. And I'm not going to name the insurance company. <laughs> Sounds like high cost already. Yes. And, I'm already holding um, my wallet. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they came to me through a friend and said, you know what? We're really happy with our advisor, but we thought we'd just get a second opinion. And I think they were very shocked to really learn how insurance companies and how certain institutions only use their own funds, Ryan. So no conflict of interest there. (laughs) You said it, Bob. Well, we talked a lot about being a fiduciary on the show today. And clearly this insurance company is not a fiduciary because it would be a conflict of interest to recommend just your products because you get paid out more to sell your products. Exactly. And I don't think anyone thinks about that because they might be working with a wonderful man, a wonderful woman at that firm. And again, they're probably doing the best job that they can. However, the issue is they can only provide what the firm allows them to provide. So who's to say that those are the right funds? And they both looked at me and they were like, oh. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, the light bulb you know, went Michelle, on. It is possible that there could be one mutual fund company that has a, a fund in every category that's outperformed every other fund in the universe, right? I mean, it's possible. Haven't found one yet, Bob. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's not possible. I just wanted to posit it. <laughs> it's never happened then- in history. Yeah. And that's kind of the key. And that's why there is advantages to being a fiduciary because you can go out and basically shop the best deal, right? I mean, it's, you know, Mm -hmm. we're a big believer in low cost and you're not beholden to using anyone's product is a clear advantage over somebody that can only offer what products they have in there on their shelf per se. Absolutely. Michelle, in the case of this this particular uh, portfolio where the mutual funds high cost and where they outperforming or underperforming. Definitely underperforming. And the big thing, Bob, is certain funds were outperforming in the sense that they were dominant in the S&P. So, of course, when you look at the portfolio, it's done well. But I showed them this really cool chart of the history of the markets and how everything's cyclical and how eventually, you know, the S&P 500 is going to cool off. 
Who's to say if there's a recession? We don't know. But ultimately, things are going to go up and down over time. And I asked them and I said, looking at this chart going back 20 years, what do you think is going to happen? And they were like, oh, wow. Yeah, maybe the S&P is going to cool off. So maybe we need to take some profits now. So it's just so funny when you put pictures in front of people and then they're like the light bulb goes on and they're like, oh, I get it now. I think that's an important point is, and this is why I like the way you run this analysis, it's nice just to look at all your investments on one spreadsheet so you can actually see how the money spread out. And a lot of times you have a lot of different names in your portfolio, but they all own the same things and that's called lack of diversification. Well, you know, like like this year, for example, uh, small company stocks, US stocks have hit all time, not just new highs for the year, all time highs in history 90% 90% of the portfolios we've analyzed over the last 40 years don't have a penny, not even a penny invested in small company stocks. Crazy. And then lastly, income. So we talk, I'm sure you guys talk a lot about this on the show. Income, income, income. You need stability of income in retirement. And we could double their income. So going from 20000 to 44000 So that's over $22,000 of extra money that they can spend. Every single year. Every single year. Wow. So it's kind of like that fiduciary segment we did today, Rye. Is this portfolio being run in your best interest or is it being run in the salesman's best interest? So if that 20000 is going to come in additional income, where was that going before? Most of it was going to, to fees and commissions. Yeah, you yeah know, it's a mutual funds, right? Why line pocket when you can line yours? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And I think that's, that's the key here is the beauty of this portfolio looks like, you know, they have current income coming in. They have Social Security that's going to come in. Do they have any sort of pension coming in? No. No. So, but the income that you're going to be able to create, that extra 20000 a year, that's money that they don't have to go into their principal of their portfolio that they can live off of, which is kind of, that's the ideal situation you want when you're building a retirement plan. Yeah, absolutely. And I know sometimes cash flow, because I, I started to use the word cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, and they kind of looked at me like, I don't know what cash flow means. And I broke it down as think about your rental home. And I think this is just the great example that you have a rental home, you have tenants in there, they're giving you rent. So the mm-hmm. price of your house may go up and down over time. So, but you're still making rent no matter what that price of that house does. And that's exactly what we're talking about today is you're still making rent. It's rental income, right? You're getting $44,000 of rental income every year. That's the beauty of this analysis, Michelle, is that you know you can drill down into such sophistication. You have everything analyzed to the penny, but you can also look at it from 30,000 feet and talk about what's really important to them and big benefits to them and then drill down to see exactly how those benefits will you know, will be achieved. It's a beautiful, beautiful report. Thank you. I like it. Beautiful. Yes. Even even the colors are nice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, great job, as Bob likes to say, another financial masterpiece. And if you're thinking to yourself, this is the kind of review I need. I need to figure out what my income gap is. I need to look and see, do I have a lot of high cost mutual funds, high cost investment products that are taking away from me achieving my goals? Here's your shot to get that full review. We still have a couple slots left. So if you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, and superstar certified financial planner, Michelle McKinnon, will run for you our famous total financial master plan just like this and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. So it's a full review where if you bring in all your statements, just put them in a folder, we'll go through everything for you. We're even going to build you your own personalized financial portal so we can review everything at a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all the critical components just like we did right here. We're going to look at income. Can we help you increase or optimize your income by another 20000 a year to fill in your income gap for retirement? We're going to look at diversification. Do you have a lot of different investments that are all doing the same thing? Are you protected if the market goes down? We're going to show you how to safeguard or bulletproof your portfolio against any type of market. And we're going to look at those high cost mutual funds. How can we help you reduce costs on your portfolio? Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan. And we're going to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money or more more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years. Take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. This is your chance. Don't miss out. We have a few slots left. Please give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 
for your retirement, our team at Payne Capital Management will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text right now at 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. Wow. Another great show. And Michelle, I have to say, you know, knowing that you're always out at the Hamptons doing so many cool things, it only makes it that much more of an honor that you got to hang with us this morning. Are you heading out to the Hamptons right now? I figure you have to be. I have to be, Ryan. Come on. <laughs> the best place to be. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Michelle McKinnon, she has the life here in Manhattan. <laughs> Big Bob, what's on tap for the rest of the weekend? Well, I was thinking of flying down to Mexico and hanging out with Mark on his honeymoon, but he told me that's not such a good idea. (laughs) Well, good luck today, Mark. We wish you uh, the best. Remember to say I do at the right time. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, another great show. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.